Things have started to get warm here in southeast Queensland, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at how I'm trying to keep the silver perch cool and happy. How's it going, folks? Rob here. Had a few issues with the silver perch, in particular the ones that I moved going off their feed. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of a clip because I think I've nailed down the cause. So basically we're in spring here in southeast Queensland, Australia. In the last couple of weeks has seen our temperature hover between around about 29, a little bit over 29, to about 31, 32 Celsius. And today we're up to around about 36 according to the interwebs. Um, it hasn't quite hit that yet, it's only been 35. So what I think has happened is the water temperature has come up to a point that it's affected the um, silver's appetite and they're just not very hungry. It wasn't really an issue until probably about a week or so ago I noticed the uh, perch, the ones that I moved in particular, went right off their feed. The ones behind me here, they'd polish it off in around about 20 minutes but yeah, these guys just aren't even snapping at it. I'm actually going to connect another air compressor today, so both tanks have their own dedicated air compressor. Um, it's just a quick little jobby that shouldn't take so long, so hopefully that'll keep them happy. To begin with, I was a little bit concerned that I may have had a nitrite spike or an ammonia spike, so I'll bring you down and show you the results I got from the tests. The nitrite and the ammonia was pretty much well traced. I mean, you don't really want to even see a, a speck of nitrite in there, but the ammonia was down pretty low. Now the nitrate, um, it's through the roof. I was actually a little bit concerned because I've been a little bit light on the feed for these guys, but there looks to be more than enough in there. I'd say it's between 20 to 80 parts per million. I got a pretty dodgy color chart, so I'm just sort of guessing. I'd say it'd be probably closer to the 40 mark. So I'm not too worried in that respect. Discounting that, um, yeah, the only thing I can come up with is maybe it's getting a little bit too hot for them. Now I did chop down a branch. Um, <laughs> I did post a couple of uh, pictures on social media and mentioned it in the last update from the other week. And what I've done is just pretty much will just prop up the um, top hat there with a tent pole for the time being. And I've covered over this far end with a double, um, double wrap of 90% shade cloth. And just on this section here, I have a 70%, I think it's 70%, might be 50%. So as you can see, the tanks are fairly well um, shaded. So hopefully that'll just keep the light off the top of the tanks if the excess light was affecting them. And I must say, even this, um, this lighter shade cloth is helping these plants in this root pouch bed. These strawberries have been wilting, as you can see by the damaged leaves over the past couple of days and today being even hotter and they look to be doing fine. So obviously a little bit of shade has helped these guys. Down here though, it's a different story because at the moment I've only got the 20% shade cloth up or veggie net. And as you can see by Grandma Beetroot, um, she's not liking the heat very much at all. Some of the spinach over there is wilting. Uh, the beans look to be holding fine, but what I think the problem is, the sun is hitting these rocks here and they're pretty much all acting like a bit of a thermal sink and they're soaking up the, the heat and passing it through to the water. I did a little test just before here. I'll just set up the camera. So I stuck the probe in here before, we'll just turn it back on again, and we're running at a fairly good, decent pH. It's not running through the roof, it's not running too low, it's where I like it, between 6, about 6.3 6 and 6.8, so I'm pretty happy with that. And the temperature, we're running at 26 degrees Celsius. There we go, might help if I bring it into shot. Um, so that is a little bit warm, that's pretty much all the top end for the silver perch. So they like it, um, I think from memory, around about 12 to 26. So I definitely think the heat has made them a little bit more lethargic. I mean the jade perch, they can go anywhere up to 32 degrees and they're what I've run previously in the system. So um, yeah, I think I might go back to them in the future because summer's only going to get hotter from here. What I think I need to do is pretty much we'll start to um, shade some of these beds a little bit better. The only thing I can really think of doing at the moment is getting rid of this light veggie netting and maybe putting over a 30%. I don't want to go too high. I don't want to go 50% straight out of the gate. Um, we might go with a 30 and just see how that goes. So also too, just to show you, I dosed up the system with some um, iron this morning. I noticed the, a couple of plants were looking a little bit sus and also gave it some, what do you call it? Kelp, powdered kelp. So that should look after any of the micronutrients in the beds. So I'll just take you around and show you the um, spinach actually. So this spinach, loads of wilty leaves on it. I'm actually thinking about cutting back some of the flower spikes. One over there has fallen down through the night. Um, so I, I definitely think there's a, there's a lot of plant soaking up a lot of water there. 
considering we've got all this over the top of the aquaponic system as well. And I was contemplating pulling this branch off yesterday so I could run some shade cloth through, but I was a little bit late at finishing off the um, external bell siphon clip. Just to show you down here where the plants are getting shade, not a problem whatsoever. These lettuce are standing up nice and tall. I can guarantee you out in the soil patch, even under shade cloth, these guys would be wilted by now. Around the back here, just to show you um, these guys here, these lettuce, they're in the sun a bit and they're suffering a little, but not too much. They are copping a little bit of um, shade from that chard there. So I thought I'd just do this quick little update um, just to show you that, yeah, the fish have gone off their feed a little bit and I have put it down pretty much well just to the temperature at the moment. See if we can get a picture of them um, surfing in the current there. They like to come up to the Venturi there and just sit in the flow, so yeah. Pretty happy little fish, I think. Um, I really don't think the dissolved oxygen is going to be that low in the system. Would be nice to get a reliable um, dissolved oxygen meter, but yeah, that's on the wish list. I might um, set up this hosing and um, we'll throw the other compressor on and see how we go with that. So just to show you folks, I've got them both hooked up now and they're running on separate lines into the fish. So there you go, there's tank one. And as you can see, there's some uneaten feed I need to get out, but those bubbles are definitely Adding to the oxygen content of the water. Tank 2, a bit harder to see, it's behind the Venturi there. And again, I need to take some feed out, but she's bubbling away nicely. So for you folks who do have problems with your water temperature going up and down all the time in the system, a lot of the time um, you can help combat it by basically adding more water. The more water volume you have, the more stable the water is, um, the harder it is to lose and gain uh, temperature. So with this system here, I found it a lot more stable than when we had the single IBC fish tank. I had fluctuations that I could almost watch through the day. With this system here now, we've got, oh, I think well over 3,000 litres running through the system. So I have found that it does take a little bit more to push the temperature up, but also too, once it gets up there, it takes a little bit longer for it to fall down. For you folks who have got smaller systems and you are looking for ways to bring the water temp down a bit, I have seen folks freeze bottles of water, um, like cordial bottles or soft drink bottles full of water, and then popping them into the sum tank. Maybe not a good idea directly in with your fish, but popping them into the sum tank, just so the water cools down a little bit before it's pumped through to the fish tank. If you've got an all-in-one jobby where the water from the fish tank is feeding the uh, grow beds, um, it may yeah, it may pay for you to maybe um, just stick it in one corner and just try and protect it. I don't know if the fish will get damaged by going up and maybe their lips getting stuck to the uh, frozen bottle, but yeah, it might be an idea just to protect them from it, just in case it could damage them. And the best way you can go about, you know, shading out your grow bed, trying to keep the, um, the clay or the rocks cool, is to plant more green. Obviously, with the amount of nitrate I've got sitting in the system at the moment, there's no reason I couldn't have a load more plants in there shading that stuff out, but I might have to wait till a cooler day and I might throw up that shade cloth before I get into that. So anyway, I'll pretty much will leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a vlog or catch up on how the system's going now that we're coming into the last couple of weeks of spring here in southeast Queensland, Australia. I do hope your systems are booming and I can hear the fish in both tanks feeding behind me now and I'll catch you next week. Cheers, folks, or next clip anyway. Cheers, folks. Have a great one.